Well, helping us to make sense of the latest from an increasingly fragile Yemen, I'm joined in the studio by our international analyst, Marco Vincenzini. Uh, Marco, so the Houthi rebels then uh, calling for peace after all the attacks um, are, are stopped. How likely is that to happen, considering Saudi Arabia called off the airstrikes yesterday and now they've restarted them? From the Saudi perspective, when they called off the airstrikes, after the, air, after the calling off of the airstrikes, they were actually outside the city of Taiz. Houthis had stormed the base, and the Saudis began their attack and their bombing. So from the Saudi perspective, it's the Houthis, according to the United Nations Security Council resolution, telling the Houthis to disarm and pull back and to withdraw from the territories that they conquered after September of 2014. So at this point, it's a very fragile stage. What we're going in is we're going from one phase of a heavy bombing, whereby the Saudis basically decimated the heavy weaponry and the heavy arms, particularly missiles of the Houthis, now to go to another phase whereby they can, they'll strike proportionally and selectively according to Houthi movements. So President Hadi of Yemen wishes to return and is confident a peace agreement can be made. But fundamentally, what we're looking at here is a, a bit of an ideological war going going on between the government militias who are Sunni and the Shia Houthi rebels. So can long-term peace uh, be sustained and can it be, can it be found? It, it's you, the only, there is no military solution to this issue. There's only a political solution. Failure to reach a political solution will result in more war, conflict and destruction of Yemen. It's the Sunni-Shia divide, it, it's taken place in other parts of the region, particularly if you're looking at places like Syria, uh, Iraq, also in parts of Lebanon. But in the Yemeni situation, unfortunately, it's morphed into that. Originally, originally it wasn't that. It always begins with local grievances. The local grievances are not taken care of. People want their piece of the pie. And mm -hmm. when it's not given to them, what happens, that breeds resentment. And then if you combine that with a sectarian or ethnic issue, that even becomes more explosive. Where does it play out in terms of tension across uh, the, the wider Middle East? Because we're seeing what's happening in Syria uh, and Iraq as well with IS and the war against IS. Does this, how does this compare in, in the battle on those fronts? Well, those battles have been going on. They're far more, the, the level of bloodshed is far more serious. I would say they've been going, it's more intense, particularly the situation in Syria, nearly when we're approaching, if not past, a quarter of a million dead. Iraq has been going on since the American invasion, that morphed into a civil war. Uh, the situation in, in Yemen has ebbed and flowed in recent years, but in the last few months, it's, it's been escalating and intensifying more. So once again, you have this, this Saudi-Iranian competition. From the Saudi perspective, they look at the Levant, Iraq, Syria, also to an extent Lebanon, and they'll say we can fight our proxy wars there. But when it comes to the, Arabi the Arabian Peninsula, this is our, the, we have zero tolerance for external interference, hence the Saudi direct involvement in Yemen, one of the reasons for it. Marco Vincenzino, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you.